Hi everybody, it's Ann Katz of, of Ask Design. Welcome to today's tutorial, which is connecting domains to separate web hosting. Two requirements for any website are domain name registration and web hosting. Most web host providers offer both services. You can keep them together at the same company or separate them. There are benefits and disadvantages to both approaches and you'll find all kinds of arguments favoring one over the other. This tutorial addresses how to connect the domain to the website when the domain name is registered at a different provider than the web hosting. There's a mix of what my clients do, so I've had to learn how to configure websites in each scenario. For example, you can purchase a domain name at GoDaddy and then host it with SiteGround or purchase the domain name and host it at GoDaddy or SiteGround. The choice is yours. No matter which option you go with, the site files and database, if you're using WordPress or another uh, content management system, always reside at the web host. For the most part, the instructions that I'm providing today uh, will use GoDaddy as the domain name registrar and SiteGround as the web host provider. Okay, so our first scenario is connecting domains and subdomains when the domain registrar and web host are the same. In this example, that provider is SiteGround. When you're using the same company for both services, connecting the domain is done automatically. If you want to add a subdomain, there are added steps. So you have to log into the web host account, look for your websites tab, go to the site tools or the C panel or equivalent. In SiteGround, in the left sidebar navigation, you look for the domain area, then go to the subdomains, create a new subdomain, type the name of it in the field provided, and then click the Create button. Okay, so scenario number two is connecting primary domains when the domain registrar and web host are separate. There are two options. The first is using the web host name servers. The second is using the registrar's name servers with the web host a record. You only need to use one option. Now below I'm showing you the DNS records of one of my clients um, defaults. They have uh, two NS records here and a couple of A records. I'll get into the specifics in a minute. I suggest you do this preparatory step before doing anything, log into the web host account and make note of the IP and name servers. So you log in, you go to the website tab, look for the site tools or cPanel or equivalent. In the dashboard, scroll around until you find the IP and name servers area and just, you know, make a note of it, um, copy and paste into a file or, or write it down. The, the uh, site IP is the A record. It contains four numbers and looks something like this. The name servers, um, there are usually two listed, often beginning with uh, the letters NS. And here we have an example. And both of these differ from the GoDaddy DNS. So you have the defaults at GoDaddy, and then you have um, these other defaults at the web host, which would be SiteGround in our example. Oh, like, let's talk about the first option here, which is using the web host name servers, which in this case is SiteGround. Log into your domain registrar account, which is GoDaddy in our example. Navigate to the domain area and manage your DNS 
in the name server area, click that change button right here. And change the name server defaults to the web host name servers. And in this case, we're using SiteGround's name servers. in the GoDaddy name server area. Save your new settings. This will point everything, all DNS records, including your email, to the web host. All DNS settings will then be managed at the web host. I've got an example here of the changed records at GoDaddy will, that will now use the um, NS for SiteGround. The A records have stayed the same. Okay, now for option number two, which is using the domain registrar name servers with the web host A record. Log into the domain registrar account navigate to the domain area and manage your DNS, leave the default name servers as is, and edit the DNS settings. So you want to add an A record to point to the web host site IP address. Let's see how we do that. Click the Add button. Fill in the values, so the type would be A, the name would be this um, at symbol, and um, the data would be the site IP from SiteGround. You can change the TTL. I like to have it match the other TTLs that I see. And then save. This process points only the website, while the other DNS records stay the same, including the emails. All DNS settings will continue to be managed here at the registrar. And now for our third and final scenario which is connecting subdomains when the domain registrar and web host are separate. So if you're using the web host name servers, in this case, uh, SiteGround, this is what you do. The DNS is getting managed at the web host. So connecting to subdomains is the same series of actions that we took earlier on in the tutorial where the registrar and web host are the same provider. You only need to create the subdomain at the web host. So you log into the web host account, look for your websites tab, the site tools button or cPanel or equivalent, look for that subdom the domain subdomain area and create a new subdomain. Type the name in the field we're using new 2022 in our example and click the create button much as we did earlier on. Here we are. Create. Now if you're using the domain registrar name servers the DNS gets managed at the registrar. So you must create the domain the subdomain at both the registrar and the web host. So the first part of this uh, scenario is just what, exactly what we just did. Log into the web host account, look for the websites tab, site tools or cPanel or equivalent area, and look for that domain subdomains section and create a new subdomain just as we just uh, we did in the previous step and then click the create button so that's part one part two uh, is done at the, the domain registrar 
So you log into the domain registrar account, navigate to the domain area where you manage your DNS, leave the default name servers as is, you edit the DNS settings by adding an A record to point to the web host site IP address. Click the Add button, fill in the values, and then save. So the type is A, the name is the subdomain name, new, 2022 in our example, and the site IP which is the A record. Again, I like uh, the 10,800 seconds. This will leave the default name servers intact while pointing only the A records. And you still manage your DNS here at the uh, domain registrar. Just like the primary domain, all the files for the subdomain reside at the web host. So that, my friends, is the end of our tutorial about connecting domains to separate web hosting, giving you three different scenarios that you might encounter in your web design, web development life. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the uh, comments section. I'll happily try to assist you. Have a great day. Thanks very much for tuning in.